So a while back, I did my why I sell the seven seas video, and I sort of promised that I do a video on how I sell the seven seas. Now, I did have a script for that, but it's like 4,000 words long, and I decided not to publish that version. The reason is because the instructions are so specific that it's different from person to person, and it's really disorganized and messy. Windows and Android users are going to benefit a lot from Sailing the Seven Seas. Mac users are hit and miss, and Linux users have their free and open stuff. So here's the deal. I'm going to explain to you how I personally sell the seven seas, just as a general idea in how things work. I'm going to tell you how I get my items, and this works for at least 99% of the time. If it doesn't work, then you're going to have to do a lot more digging. There are tons and tons of subreddits that are centered on piracy, so you can go ahead and check out on those, especially the mega threads, to get a quick start on dipping your toes into the seven seas. But these are all the methods that personally work for me. And here's how I do it so you guys can get a quick point of reference. Before we go even further, just one more small thing. If you have any issues or if you're looking for something super specific, please contact me or through my email or on my Twitter, links down below. I am a lot more active there and it's easier to talk there compared to YouTube comments. So if you have any issues in this area, please don't hesitate to contact me there so that I can get to whatever issues that you have. Now, let's get into it. The first step and the one that's absolutely necessary, do not use uTorrent or BitTorrent. The company once bundled Bitcoin miners into their softwares, completely untrustworthy. Use another torrent client that is a lot more trustworthy. Personally, I use Qubit Torrent. It's free and open source. You can literally check the codes yourself to see if there are anything suspicious. The next one, if you're in the West, have a VPN. Why? Because if you don't, then the big corporations are gonna snitch to your ISP. This has happened to my girlfriend where she downloaded episodes of The Simpsons and her ISP Spectrum sent a letter to her telling her to stop doing that or else. So if you're selling the seven seas, please have some protection. Now, if you're not in the West like me, your ISP might not really care about it. My ISP is Indie Home and it never... Yeah, 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 we get it. My ISP is Indie Home and while I have lots and lots of issues with Indie Home, at least they don't snitch, which is kind of ironic and also sort of weird for a government-backed ISP. So I can sell the seas just fine. What's not fine is when I'm browsing 18 plus content. When I do that, Ipochan will get really mad about it because Indonesia strive to be a non-degenerate country. Good luck with that. That's why I have a VPN, like private internet access, to change Ipochan's personality to Inechan, her infinitely better half. Don't worry, that's not a sponsored transition. It sounds like one, but it's not. I don't think a lot of these VPN providers are going to sponsor me when they found out that I sailed the seven seas. <laughs> but there are so many VPNs out there. Which one should I choose? Well, lots of popular YouTubers shill VPN these days like ExpressVPN, Surfshark, NordVPN. Usually they have coupons and deals for those VPNs. Take advantage of those. The one that I use is Private Internet Access. Linus Tech Tips always promote this VPN. And for those of you who don't care about tech, Count Dankula promoted this at some point in his channel. It has been a lifesaver for me. I bought a two-year package for 70 bucks at the time, but nowadays they have a three-year plus three months package for 80 bucks. That's slightly more than the price of a AAA game these days, and with that price, I can get all the games that I want safely without the needs of paying them, especially when they're from absolutely scummy companies. You can check on the prices of these VPNs that I listed linked down below. I recommend you to get one, especially if you're living in a censorship-ridden country like mine, so that you can browse 18 plus content with no issues. Though personally for you guys, the one VPN that I've seen people recommend the most is Molvad. Molvad has a flat rate of 5 euros per month, which is like 6 bucks. That's it, just six bucks a month, and you're able to access all sorts of content around the internet, around the seven seas, without the ISPs snitching on you. I think it's a great deal. It's so much better than subscribing to multiple streaming services or game passes. At least the stuff that you downloaded are 100% yours. You can play them offline, you can share them with your friends, you can install them as many times as you like. It's infinitely better to have these items rather than having the corporations be like, nope, you don't own that, it's ours by some arbitrary digital ownership and legal BS. Though if you are gonna download all these stuff, you're gonna need to spend some money to buy storage. And I mean, lots and lots of storage. <laughs> but hey, at least these stuff that I downloaded 
are mine. Another benefit that you'll have with a VPN is that if you're downloading from certain websites and you don't have a premium for that website, they will usually tell you to wait for a certain amount of time until you can download the stuff again. Mega love to do this. With a VPN, you can reset your IP and therefore reset that entire countdown in an instant. Absolutely fantastic feature in my opinion and why I think VPN is great. One more small thing that you need to have before you go, ad blockers. Many parts of the seven seas tend to have some really shady ads that will lead you into some shady stuff. So I recommend you to just block them using ad blockers. The ad blocker that I use is uBlock Origin. It's the go-to recommendation for ad blockers that most people use, even though it's more of a wide spectrum blocker. I highly recommend using it in general. Some browsers also have built-in ad blockers like Brave or Opera. You can use those as well. And yes, using ad blocker means that I won't get too much ad revenue in this video which is perfectly fine. I'm sharing this information for free for everyone to use because your safety and privacy are much more important than my ad revenue. But if you think that my content is worth supporting, then there are many ways you can support this channel through the links down below. My personal recommendation for supporting me is through my stream channel. I stream live at APB show every Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Go subscribe there, stream channel link down below, and you'll get live donation shout outs. So with all that in mind, Let's talk about where I get my stuff. First off, let's talk about general content. The one go-to website if I want an all-in-one content is 1337X. There are proxies and variations of the websites, but the name is the same, it's 1337X. It's an all-in-one package and contain all sorts of stuff. Movies, TV shows, softwares, games, 18 plus content, all of that stuff. I highly recommend it. If you want to download stuff from there, just search for the item, pick the item that you need, and then click the magnet link and let Qubit Torrent download the stuff for you. You can even limit the download speed in case you need to use the internet while you're downloading. If you want to get Japanese related stuff, I usually go to Nya.c, which hosts a lot of the most popular anime and even live action Japanese stuff. There are also uncensored versions of the anime, if the anime gets censored at one region or one streaming website after another. It even has some anime and visual novels in it. I got Fate Stay Night Wialta Nuwa and Tsukuhime right there, so I highly recommend it, especially for the Fate and Melty Blood fans who have never touched the visual novels which are like 90% of them. As for mangas or comics, I read my manga through this app called Tachiyomi, which is available on Android, but on the iPhone, you're just gonna have to Google them. See if you can find websites that host the manga that you like, and you have to read them through the browser. But with Tachiyomi, I can save the manga in my phone so I can read them anytime I like. So even if the internet is dead, I can just read the manga at any point, at any time, whatever I like. My brother uses this all the time to get whatever mangas that he like to get. If you wanna see more websites recommendation, the R Piracy subreddit has a big mega thread that will link you to all sorts of websites. They also have additional softwares and tips that you can read and follow just to make sure that your experience in the seven seas is about as smooth and safe and possible. So please go check that mega thread out. I know some people have a distaste with Reddit, but they really do help. And speaking of help, there's also another subreddit that I always go to called Crackwatch. There was once a Crackwatch website, but it's dead apparently. So this subreddit is my go-to fix if I want to see which games that got cracked recently. Some of the posts even include the ones from FitGirl who not only repacks PC games but also Switch games so that you can play them on emulators like Yuzu or Ryujinx. I got Smash Ultimate on the PC with all the characters through FitGirl, though I highly recommend you to update the Yuzu and Ryujinx that's bundled in the installers. They're usually out of date. Ah yes, speaking of emulators, this is as good as time as any to talk about this, especially when Nintendo loves to just pull the plug on their older titles. I have another video that talks about emulation and jailbreaking, all of that stuff. Check it out, links down below. In that video, I talk about my jailbroken 3DS, my jailbroken Wii, and my jailbroken PS3. And I also got my PS4 to be jailbroken as well at version 9.0. It's a pretty simple thing to do, actually. Unlike the torrents, I download the games for emulators and jailbroken consoles differently. All I do is Google them. <laughs> No, really. I just Google them. I Google game name ROM. A lot of the websites on the first couple of searches on Google usually lead you to where you can actually download the thing. Usually. Now, this is a bit of a mixed bag because these websites aren't exactly the most reputable websites. I highly recommend you all to please make sure that the files that you downloaded are in compressed file formats like zips or rars or 7z. Sometimes these websites want you to download their own proprietary software to download the ROMs. Don't let them do that. Find alternative links that will let you to download the stuff directly 
to your browser. This is where ad blockers can come in handy because these random ROM websites tend to have lots and lots of ads that can be really annoying. This is where a lot of your browsing skills are being put at test because sometimes they have lots and lots of download buttons and you're not sure which one to choose and which ones you have to click to actually get the stuff that you want. So this method of just Google searching the ROM, it works for me, but you have to proceed with caution. I do need to remind people that while I do like to sell the seven Cs, people aren't gonna be able to make some income if you're not supporting them. Most of the games in Crackwatch are not big AAA releases. If you gave one game that you found there a try and you end up loving it, buy them on the stores and support the developers. These are the ones that care more about making good games rather than making really strict and heavy DRMs. This is true for the content that you pirate in general. You like to pirate and all that, sure, but at the very least, give just a little bit of that extra money you have for the developers who have worked hard on it. Now, of course, I can talk all I like in this video and not actually do the stuff that I tell you to do, but I can assure you that I'm not just bark. I actually do buy stuff. My Steam library has hundreds and hundreds of games. I bought them. Here are the Detective Conan books that I got. Case closed, in case you're in the West. These are special edition books. One-shots that are made by the assistance of the original offer. They made really good one-shot stories. You don't have to buy the actual media, buy the merchandise, especially if they're available in the stores near you. I do not support Nintendo a lot, but I do like this bootleg imitation of Mario that I bought for two bucks. Not really. Two bucks. Point is, content creators, whether it be game developers or movie makers and all that, they still need money too. Do your best to support the ones that you think deserve the money. Support the creators as much as you can, buy their merchandise or donate to their PayPal or Patreon or fan buffs if they have some. This video is more of a guide in how to circumvent a lot of the BS that big corporations put to consumers, especially streaming services where you're not allowed to see certain shows in specific regions because of some arbitrary restrictions, or streaming services that outright censor the shows for worldwide releases, like for the World Zen Haram anime, or game companies that decided that it'd be a good idea to just rip people off of their money and screw over the consumers to squeeze as much dollar as they can. And yes, of course, selling the seven seas is all about getting stuff for free. That's a completely undeniable fact. However, there's a little bit of a learning curve to get those stuff and risks that you have to take, a lot of which most people don't want to put themselves through. Most people aren't going to be skilled enough or even willing enough to sell the seven Cs. So they opt to buy the products instead because it's the easier option. You just need to take a lot of money from your wallet. Still, for those of you who wanna dip your toes, hopefully this video can be helpful to you. But ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, you get the industry that you deserve. The more you support bad corporations, the more you deserve bad products. The industry doesn't really care if you call them out on social media. They only care when you give money to them or when you don't give money to them. They only care when you ask for a refund or when you sue them. It's all business and it's nasty. At the very least, equip yourself with the necessary weapons to fight against these arbitrary rules. And if you're still not comfortable with it, the least you can do is to promote and support the good stuff to get the industry that we need. That's all for the video today. If you like it, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support the channel through the links down below. And thanks for watching.